Today we're going to look at Garrett's Green Stinker number 4. Um, this first approach to it, you could be within 5 or 10 minutes of the start of your test. We're not very far from the test centre here. And you could get this particular stinker on the way out on your test or in the last few minutes on the way back. So I will look at it from both directions. What I'm going to do is talk through the thing rather than do a client centred video here. Talk through, give you all the information you need and then if you do perhaps get to practice it or you come down here with your instructor um, he will no doubt approach the matter in a client centred way asking you questions rather than telling you what to do. Just keep an eye on the silver car, I'm moving away from you a little bit. The road's bending ahead, so check in the mirror. No sign of the stinker as yet. Check in the mirror again because the road's bending. You've got two hazard signs on the left. One's narrowing of the road. The other one's a bridge. Now there's the stinker, it's the bridge. The first question is, is the room to pass oncoming vehicles? It doesn't look like it, so we need to be slowing down. The next question, is, next question is, are there any priorities? There aren't any priority markings, so we approach with care, being prepared to stop if we see a vehicle at the far end. And it's quite clear as you come in that there's room for one car to pass here. The important thing is, never commit into a bottleneck like that if you cannot see that your exit is clear. You don't want to be um, have your nose into the tunnel find somebody else suddenly coming the other way and then you're stuck. You've got to reverse if somebody's followed you in you're not going to be able to do that. If the guy approaching you decides to be bloody minded or somebody's followed you in you could have both be stuck in the tunnel. So never commit into a bottleneck like that unless you can see that your exit, your way out of trouble is clear. Never enter a situation you don't have an exit from. So we're going to turn the car around just here and then we'll have a look at it again from the opposite direction. We're going to go back to the tunnel and uh, if you come at it from this direction you'll probably be on your way back to the test centre. But the principles are exactly the same, the observation needs to be the same and the care needs to be the same. You'll be made to do a left here, perhaps on the way back. And I can see there's a bend in the road ahead, so I'll check my mirror. Got hazard markings down the centre, separating the two streams of traffic. Mirror. Now I can see the tunnel appearing. So the first question is: the room for two of us? It doesn't look like it. Second question is: Are there any priority marks? There aren't. So the now third question is: Is anybody else coming? No. So we can get a move on. Once you're satisfied that it is clear, get a move on. Don't hang around, but be sure before you commit the nose of the car into the into the tunnel that your exit is clear. So that's stinker number four. Now there is another one almost the same just around the corner so we're going to have a look at that one as well the same principles apply but vision on this one is not so good as the last one so extra care needs to be taken on this one in looking for other vehicles approaching checking the mirror having turned into the road nice long straight stretch of road you could you could conceivably come along here on your test I know the tests in the past have come this way and I've got some hazard signs on the left one of them backed on amber which tells us that there's been some drama here and it's a low bridge sign so uh, we know there's a bridge just around that bend 
mirror. Narrowing vehicles, the sign says narrowing road, oncoming vehicles in the middle. There's the bridge, mirror. The guy behind's a bit close, so I'm going to slow up early. Again, there's not room for two cars, there's no priorities, there's one committed, so I'm going to get the speed well off, make sure we've got space, and then through we go. I'm going to take the right coming up immediately. So the vision is not so good on that one, so be sure that there's nobody else committed from the opposite direction before you commit yourself into the tunnel. It's a bit like a meeting situation where you have cars parked on both sides of the road. And you have to make the decision whether um, an approaching car is going to cause you a problem. It's just the same really as a narrowing, it's a narrowing of the road, so the same kind of uh, rules and considerations apply. Is there room to get through? Is the other guy coming on? Or is he giving way? So we go back around, take that little one again. And I'm going to call these, both of these tunnels um, stinker number four because they're the same problem really. And they're very close together. It's unlikely I think that you'll get both on your test. But who knows? I certainly don't. Okay, we've got a sign here telling us we've got to go left. There's a sign telling us there's a there's a height restriction, so that's probably going to be a bridge mirror. Left signal for the uh, for the red car. Checking to the right, clear. Now we've seen our low bridge sign, and there it is. So we come in very carefully. I'm going to give way. Let's defuse the situation early, leaving plenty of space to come through. Down into first mirrors check before we go. Definitely safe now. Once I'm committed, they will give way. Well, let's say you can be reasonably sure they'll give way, unless it's a complete imbecile coming the other way. That does happen. So that's stinker number four. When you see the narrowing of the road, ask yourself if there's room to get through. Having made that decision, then ask yourself, what are the priorities? Are there the road markings telling you you must give way? Or telling you that the oncoming traffic goes right away or doesn't? Look out for those. If there's none of that, then be prepared to give way. And of course then you're looking for oncoming traffic. So we're going to go, go and do stinker number five now. I might as well um, just talk through this time. Now we've got the additional difficulty here of a cyclist. And cyclist must be allowed a metre and a half. And it's going to be touch and go whether I can pass him and be safe. So I'm going to wait behind you. I've checked my mirror. I'm slowing down. I know there's no priorities here. I'm looking for oncoming. I'm just going to move out to the centre and I can see a van. And a car following the van. Coming over to the left to let them through. Cyclist is committed. Mirror. And it's safe to go. Keep him back from the cyclist for the moment until I know I've got a clear road. I must leave him a metre and a half. Head towards the centre. I can go past quite safely here. Must not break the speed limit of course. So we're going to go on now to stinker number five, uh, which is round by the other bridge actually, and it's caught my pupils out many times. And really the problem has been poor observation poor awareness, late reaction. It's just uh, one or two minutes away and again could well come up on your test. Probably if it did it would be on the way back. It conceivably could be on the way out I suppose. I've got a cyclist head, I'm checking my mirror. I'm going to stay out central, keep well away from him, get my speed up to get past while I've got the chance. got a roundabout coming up, take the left here and then we get quite close to sticker number five. Now 
Now when we come to the end of this road we have the option to go right or left. And if I ask my pupils to go right they frequently make a mess of this. So it's worth having a look. So round to the left is the little bridge we went on the last time. Mirror. Got a giveaway sign, so there we are, we know we've got a giveaway, I'm watching Red. He is waiting for me, I'm going right, and there are giveaway lines here. So we make sure it's clear right and under the bridge, it is clear to go. What tends to happen there, my pupils come along to that, they don't see the giveaway sign, they don't see the giveaway lines, and they go, and I have to use, use the dual control because we don't go too quickly into this road without looking properly. We'll have another look at it, go around the square, and look at it again. Okay, we're approaching stinker number five again. Really the way to deal with this is to be on the lookout for road signs. Whenever you're approaching a junction, the question should always be, who has priority? Is there any threat from the other direction? So we're going to go right at the end. We have a giveaway sign, we've got a triangle on the road. Checking my mirrors, making a signal. But I must be sure it's clear, not only on the right, but on the left. That means staying well down because of the bridge. I do have time to go. So that's stinkers number four and number five. I hope that's helpful. Um, as I said earlier, probably if an instructor brings you around here, uh, he may do it with a question and answer technique rather than talking you through it. Uh, but you'll have some idea what to expect. Thanks for watching.